Alright guys, Ivan here and yep, as you can see in the title of the video, I'm gonna show you some of the best, some of the most shredded, the biggest, the most well-shaped, the most developed, the most muscular legs, quads, hamstrings, glutes, calves, in the history of, well, I would say bodybuilding, but that's also the history of the world, because I'm sure there aren't any other athletes or other people people, humans that have better legs than bodybuilders, better looking legs, maybe stronger, maybe more endurable, something like that, but not the biggest and the most crazy looking. So before I start talking about modern era bodybuilding and modern day freaks, the guys with the best legs, I'm gonna take you back, I'm gonna take you back in time and let's go back to 1960s and 70s. And let's take a look at those guys. So, did anybody from that era had some world-class, very, very good legs? And there aren't many of them. I mean, sure, there are some guys who had a bit better legs, but most of them didn't really emphasize legs as body part. I mean, the most important body parts at the time were muscles like chest, like arms, waist was very important. Back was not that important, neither were legs at the time, but some had good legs and <clears throat> if you take a look at Arnold, I mean Arnold was known for having weak legs, but the other guys who were there at the top didn't really have super impressive legs, let's be honest. And Arnold, even though his legs were a bit smaller, I like the shape of them and I'm pretty sure that with today's technology, with today's equipment and quote-unquote supplementation, I'm sure he would have great wheels. But the first person in the history of bodybuilding, the first bodybuilder who ever had great world-class wheels was obviously, of course, Tom Platz. I mean, everybody knows that he is the quad father. And uh, even today, even till this day, it's arguable if anybody surpassed him. I mean, maybe in terms of glute development, probably. In the terms of glute development, maybe even hamstrings, probably hamstrings as well. And maybe calves, probably calves too. But as far as quads, nobody had better quads. Nobody until this day, because his quads were insane. And I'm not talking about the outer sweep of his legs, but actually the inner part, the thickness, the meaty area in, in the middle. It was so crazy, I'm not sure how he was able to walk. I'm sure that he was, you know, having horrible rashes after walking for some time because his legs would probably be rubbing to each other and I'm sure it wasn't very comfortable for him to walk, but it is what it is. He is known as the best quads in the history of the world even now after 30-40 years, so I'm pretty sure it was worth it. Anyways, after him, there wasn't a lot of guys who had great legs, but that was, you know, late 70s, early 80s, but as far as 80s and the beginning of 90s, you had Lee Haney, who was the reigning Mr. Olympia, and behind him you had guys like Rich Gaspari, Alila Brada, and other guys, and none of them had some super duper freaky legs. But neither did him, I mean Lee Haney, um, compared to the previous Mr. Olympia champions like Arnold, Frank Zane or Franco Colombo and so on, he had improved legs, his legs were better, that's for sure. But in 1991, the first year when Dorian Yates appeared at the Mr. Olympia stage, he was compared to Lee Haney, of course he took second place, but everybody kept saying we have new Lee Haney with better legs. And that was the truth. So that was the first time we saw something different. Somebody who is complete, unlike Tom Plutz, whose upper body wasn't really that impressive compared to his quads. Somebody who had the amazing upper body combined with world-class huge legs. And that was Mr. Dorian Yates. And uh, Lee Haney saw what's gonna happen, so he retired in 1992, we had our new Mr. Olympia, it was uh, of course Dorian Yates, and uh, at that era, you didn't really have too many super crazy, impressively developed legs as well. I mean, you had guys like Kevin Leveroni, Flex Wheeler, Sean Ray, um, you later had Nasser or somebody, so none of them had some insanely developed huge legs except one guy, 
and that was Paul de Mayo. And I mean, look, Dorian had great legs, he had great calves, but compared to his upper body, his legs looked maybe a little bit smaller, especially from behind. And that wasn't the thing with Paul, his outer sweep was, wow, like crazy. And Dorian's outer sweep wasn't that impressive. His inner part, the so-called teardrop, was something what Dorian's legs were known for. But on the other hand, you had Paul de Mayo who had complete legs. His outer sweep was amazing and his scales as well. And from behind too, like his uh, glutes and uh, hamstrings. There was also another guy who wasn't really known for the legs, he was more known for his conditioning that actually led to his early death and that's Andreas Manser and at his autopsy doctor said that his body fat percent was zero so he literally had no fat in whole body which is pretty much impossible. Some other doctors later checked the autopsy and they said it's impossible because you cannot survive that but Andreas did not survive and of course he died so maybe he really had that. Anyways I noticed that his legs legs looked amazing and you tell me do you think his legs are impressive i find them very very impressive but nobody really had crazy big huge developed glutes at that era at dorian yates era not until 1998 when ronnie coleman actually became the mr olympia although even years prior to that couple of years before he became the mr olympia he had great glutes and he was winning shows so you can say that Ronnie has the best glutes probably in the history of the world, even today. Ronnie was also known for so many other body parts. I mean, his back is the best back in the history of the world as well. His chest is one of the best ever. His arms were definitely not his weak point. And his legs, now we come to his legs. So hamstrings, not the best hamstrings ever. But the quads though, the quads were just wow. They looked so huge and the thing is he had that separation, very very deep separation all over them. In the middle of them and the outer sweep was huge, the inner part was amazing. How did he get it? I have no idea, but he says that's because of his deep squats. He says he used to do his squats deep and that's why he has deep separation. Does that make any sense? I have no idea, but he definitely did have amazing separations and they're very, very deep. So his legs, I would say, are one of the best in the history of the world. And the thing is, when you compare his legs with those of Tom Plutz, you can say that Tom's legs are looking more impressive. One of the reasons may be that his Tom's upper body wasn't as developed. So in the contrast to upper body, his legs look huge. And one other thing that I noticed, I don't know if anybody else noticed this, but Tom's inner part of his legs is so meaty, there is so much muscle in the inner part of the thigh, which gives great illusion of having big legs. Don't get me wrong, Tom's legs were definitely enormous, but I don't think they were bigger than Ronnie's. And the thing with Ronnie is, he did not just have the illusion, not just having the inner part, but his whole legs were really, really huge. And uh, that's because he was super, super strong. And Tom was strong as well, but I don't think he was stronger than Ronnie. Anyways, Ronnie genetics were just something unique. I mean, he wasn't the most knowledgeable bodybuilder in the world. His training philosophy wasn't really based on studies and research. He trained just the way he, he liked it, he enjoyed it. And uh, basically, his genetics did the rest. So that's why he is the best bodybuilder in the history of the world ever, because of his insane genetics, combined with his crazy mindset of giving all that he has into every single workout and also doing the same thing with his diet, basically, and probably the supplements, quote unquote. So for that reason, he is the best bodybuilder in the history of the world and one of the best legs in the world ever. But after 2006 or 2005, since 2006, his body wasn't what it was before. And that's when Jay Cutler era started. So that's when Jay became the champion. And Jay, Jay was known for having great legs since ever. He said that even before he started training legs, he had great legs. And after he started training, after a couple of months, they grew exponentially. So he was known for that genetic advantage. Although in the later years, his legs weren't as big in my opinion, as his upper body was. So his upper body was bigger later, but the details that he brought in his squats in 2009, 
not so much in 2001 or 2006, but 2009 was the year when he was a bit older, so he had a better muscle maturity and his skin is a little bit thinner. He lost the title the year before to Dexter Jackson, so this year he needed to work extra hard. He had to give it all that he has. And he came peeled absolutely, he was dry as hell. So he showed a lot of detail in his legs and that's probably one of the best legs in the history of the world. But they weren't as big, they were detailed and he had feathers on them. Unlike Ronnie who had deep separation but never had feathers. Also, unlike the guy who beat him in 2008, Dexter Jackson, Dexter never was known for having huge legs, they never were his best body part, and also unlike Jay's successor, Phil Heath. So Phil had great legs always, they were always conditioned, they were 3D, they were pretty much always peeled to the bone, but he never had feathers on, on those quads. That's just genetic. I mean, you cannot change that with any kind of training or diet or whatever. But that never stopped him from becoming the Mr. Olympia, and he did that for seven times in a row. And it never really was a problem. It's not really a weakness. I mean, you will not be judged on the stage differently if you have feathers or you don't, but it's just something that the audience really likes to see. It's just really impressive. But that's a genetic component, I mean, you cannot change it. And pretty much the same thing goes with our current Mr. Olympia champion, Sean Roden. So, Sean is known for his legs. His legs are his biggest asset, his best body part. But he does not have feathers as well. I mean, compared to his upper body, his legs are huge. The inner part of his thighs is actually very, very developed. And also, his inner thighs are so meaty that they are basically connecting the area of his knees. And that's what creates great illusion. That's what makes his legs look enormous. And also his conditioning, when he is conditioned. And in 2018, he definitely was. But that's just Mr. Olympias. Let's talk about the guys from today who are not champions, but have great legs. And let me go back to 2009. I forgot to mention Branch Warren who was also known for having amazing quads since his early days, always did, and uh, he was so grainy, he was peeled to the bone every single time, and with his crazy kind of training, he probably, probably that's the reason why his legs were so grainy and so hard and danced, and uh, one of the best quads in the history of the world, I would have to say. And if I'm talking about the feathers in the quads, I must make sure to mention Kai Green, who is currently not competing, he is probably retired, but during his era, during the time when he was competing, he was always known for amazing legs. Not only that his legs were so big, but they were so feathered. And the same thing goes with his glutes, with his hamstrings, pretty much his whole lower body. I mean, he was known for that thing and I think that he has one of the best wheels in the history of the world. Definitely one of the. But right now, from the active bodybuilders who compete, you have Big Ramy. He's also known for his legs, but his legs are even probably too big. They're too big and they're not conditioned enough. He never really showed an amazing separation, detail and conditioning. So you cannot really say that he has the best legs in the world because he's not conditioned. Maybe he does. But we need to see them. And in order for us to see them, he needs to lose all the body fat and all the water so we can actually see what lies beneath. But I'm sure that if he does that, he will have the best legs in the history of the world because they are so huge, especially the outer sweep. It's just crazy. He, his legs are looking like two sequoia tree trunks, literally. <laughs> they are just humongous. And as far as other active bodybuilders, you have William Bonek. His legs are definitely his strong body part, um, especially from behind. His glutes are very thick, his hamstrings are always peeled, he is always in great conditioning, and his quads are very full. But it's not really something super, super impressive. On the other hand, you also have Dexter Jackson is still competing, but even at his best when he was younger, when he was Mr. Olympia, he was not known for his quads or legs at all. Um, you also have a Rolly Winkler, not super impressive legs by any means, especially from behind. His glutes are a bit weak, his hamstrings also. Brandon Curry, pretty much the same thing, weak legs, um, not as big as Rolly's. I mean, Rolly's legs are not his weakness. He, he, Rolly has big legs and Brandon has very small legs compared to his upper body. So that's his probably biggest weakness. Uh, you also have Cedric McMillan. Well, Cedric... Um, 
His legs are okay, they have a decent shape, and his glutes have great shape, I like to see that, but he is not known for having huge legs. Um, compared to his upper body, his legs are a bit smaller, so not most impressive legs in the world right now. And like Nathan Diasha, nothing special also. But the one guy that really does have very, very good and huge legs, that would be Juan Morel. He won Arnold Classic Brazil and he showed an amazing leg development. His legs were so big, especially from the front. Okay, that's enough. That's a joke, of course. He is not known for great legs. Quite the opposite, actually. He's known for poor legs. But there is another guy. This guy is a newcomer. You saw him at the Indy Pro. He took third place and that was only his pro debut. He was third behind the Kim Williams and Steve Kuklo, who won the show. But he beat Luke Sando. And Luke Sando beat Rolly Winkler, who was third at the Mr. Olympia. And Rolly Winkler even beat Sean Roden. And Sean Roden is the Mr. Olympia. So technically, if everybody comes off and this guy comes on, he can even become the Mr. Olympia. <laughs> okay, that's a, that's a long, long shot. So it's a bit bold to say stuff like that. But maybe in the future, who knows what happens. Anyways, his name is Hassan Mostafa or however you pronounce his name, I think that's right. And uh, he's a newcomer, of course, he turned pro last year, and this year he has his pro debut. But when I saw his video on Instagram that he posted today, that was my inspiration for this video, when I saw his legs. His legs are looking crazy, especially his quads. And he's very young in the sport, so he has the potential to become one of the best legs in the world, in the history of bodybuilding. So, whatever you guys think about his legs, tell me in the comment section below. If you think I forgot some bodybuilders who had great legs, make sure to tell me in the comment section below, because I made this video off the top of my head, didn't really do too much thinking, so it probably happened, I probably have forgot some guys, so don't forget to tell me in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like it, and if you want to see more bodybuilding content like this, subscribe to my channel. All the best guys, bye bye.